What's up folks? It's Matt from Three Pound Fishing. We're back on the water. We're back in the fall time. Awesome fishing. Probably one of the best times to fish for crappie in my personal opinion is the fall time. And uh, today what we're going to talk about is fishing brush piles 101. What you need to know. So if you're just getting started in crappie fishing, these are some of the things that you need to consider when fishing brush piles, vertical jigging over brush piles. These are the simple things that will definitely get you started. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna to put some slabs in the boat. I'm also gonna share some live scope and some side imaging information throughout this episode. So stick with me, sit back, relax, get something to drink. So bam, beautiful day. Let's get it going on. If your passion is crappie fishing, you found your home, sponsored by these great companies. All right, so we're gonna start off with uh, a little bit of side imaging because I think that's extremely important. We don't wanna lose sight of that. Um, side imaging is what we use to find structure. You can also find fish on it, uh, but primarily now with live scope and the new technologies, we use that to find fish. This is primarily structure, but we can see fish on it. So here we are rolling up on a point, kind of on a, a point on the main lake, and we are looking for shadows, and that's what we're searching for on side imaging right now. So I'm not saying, okay, bam, I see some shadows right here. So I know there's some fish right there. And that's, you know, that's, that's a good place to start, to be honest with you. It's a good amount of fish. There's actually some underneath the water column right there. And I know the picture is probably not perfect just because of the glare, but I'm trying my best. That's what we use side imaging for now. So let's go find another spot just so I can show you again exactly what we're looking for. All right, again, we are looking for structure. And I, I know that there's a little hump out here. So I'm looking for the fish on this hump. Now these are, these are points that I'm familiar with. Now there's a great example of fish, folks. That thing is stacked. Hopefully I can get that close enough. That's a lot of fish. And you can see the shadows. Now they are, I, what I've noticed right there with those shadows is that they're relatively close to the brush pile. These fish are not too far off of it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approach this brush pile, always uh, putting my nose into the wind, and that's the most important thing. Um, if you want to, if you're interested in my settings on side imaging, check some of the other videos that I've done. I've done several of them. I think the most important thing you need to remember is that you don't want to go too far out on your left and your right. I stick around 70 feet, which works perfect for me. So let's fish this brush pile. We're going to talk about just some of the basic 101 vertical fishing brush piles. When you're getting started with crappie fishing, what you need to know, which would have saved me a lot of time. I wish I would have had somebody do the same thing for me. So here we go. All right, so one of the most important things, is whether or not you have live scope or anything else, is you want buoy markers. And these buoy markers are critical. We always have two or three in the boat. I have several at home as backups. And you wanna replace that weight. Now this is kind of a little extra. You don't have to do this, but I like it. I've been fishing for a long time. If you keep that original weight on these buoys, it'll get tangled up and usually that's not enough weight to pull it down. So I replace that weight with an eight ounce weight. That's an eight ounce, ounce weight. And uh, I also put masonry lines, so it's thicker. It doesn't get tangled up, and uh, yeah, I like it a lot. So I, I try to make these buoys as robust as possible, and they don't get hung up because you hate throwing it out there, and then all of a sudden you realize the thing's floating on by, and you have to remark and all that other stuff. So buoys, number one. Now, those for you new life scopers, I uh, I do my searching in 30 foot forward, and then I fish a pile in 20 foot forward. So I'm so accustomed now to just 20 foot forward when I fish any type of pile. I know the size of the fish, I know what type of fish, and without a doubt, that's the go-to how you're gonna fish these vertical fish, these piles. Another very important thing is that you're gonna manually set your depth and your forward range. You're not gonna allow it to do anything auto. Um, this maximizes the screen, and that's very important. All right, so <clears throat> we've identified our pile, and now we're gonna put our nose into the wind and fish this pile. We've got a great image now on side imaging, and we're still at that 30. Now I'm switching over to the 20, and there is a load of crappie right there. That's huge. So looks like they're about 12 feet over here. This shouldn't take very long. Let's see if I can, there I am sneaking in there. Look at that, is that fish darting for it right now? So I had a fish on there. That makes me mad I should have had that fish. So, but it's okay, we're still fishing. So I've identified my pile, now I'm gonna throw my buoy. And I'm always gonna throw it past the pile. Get that buoy 
past the pile so you're always trolling up to it that's a big thing nose into the wind trolling towards that buoy so we always try to throw it past it if possible the 101 of vertical fishing brush piles it doesn't get much better than this folks i wish i would have had somebody telling me this all right we should have caught a fish there that was a big poo paw there it is again you can see it on active captain that's a great picture Looks like they looks like there's two piles over here right now. There we go. So that's a small little fish, but you can as you can see, you identify those fish and when they're when they're in there like a plum tree, I mean, you're going to catch a fish. I mean, now it might be only one or two or three or four on certain days, but some days they light it up and it's just extremely exciting. So we've got a great picture right now. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this depth down a little bit to show you the bottom. So there's a, there's a stack of fish right there. We're not even near our buoy anymore. We've identified another pile that's around here. That truly is the power of live scope. You know, before we'd have to get back and do side imaging and drive around and relocate the pile. Not anymore, you just swing this thing around a little bit and find out where they're at. There they are, it's a huge pile. And we could sit off this, probably catch them all day. Um, let's see, I'm swinging in there. I like pitching it out there and letting it come back to me. It keeps me off the pile just a little bit longer. Look at that, they're super aggressive. There it is. Catch them all day long, folks, like this. These are small guys, though. We're going to move on to try to find some bigger ones. We might move back to the buoy here and see if those fish are still there. So, it's small fish. Don't even need to show it to you. It's about a 10-incher. So, when I'm fishing this pile, I'm not necessarily trying to hit the left side, the right side. I would do that if it was structure, if it was timber. Um, but this is a kind of a brush pile. And we're going to talk about different types of piles, too. Um, this is like a low laying brush pile on top of a mound in the water, um, in the lake, I should say. And it doesn't require me necessarily to do one side or the other. I just go right over the top of it. And we do remember, uh, and this will be another great tip, is that when we are fishing nine foot or lower, I can go right on top of the pile. That's my rule of thumb. Nine foot or lower, I can go right on top of the right on top of the pile. You see that school moving in right there? That's amazing. That's a huge school. And they typically will go back to the pile that they originally were at. So that's the, those are the same fish, and they just moved in again. So I pitch down to them, and they'll stay there, and then I'll spook them maybe a little bit, and they'll move off, and they'll come right back. So let's talk about, it's a bluegill, but we're gonna talk about line. Weight, uh, the weight of your line. Um, I choose on my jigging poles to fish with eight pound line. I prefer high vis because I think it gives you just that extra tool to be able to see if something's going on. You can look at your line, you can look at your electronics, but to have that option as your line, high vis gives you that opportunity. So I go with an eight pound. I know that six pound works. What I found with six pound is, what I found with six pound is that it, it singes too easily when I'm doing my knots and I've done it underneath water and I've licked it and all that stuff to try to stop that from happening. But at the end of the day, I just didn't feel it was worth the risk. So I went with an eight pound and I don't see any significant difference between an eight or a six if I'm vertical jigging nine foot or lower. So those are the key numbers there. So eight, if I'm spider rigging, I go 10, but always vertical jigging is eight is the magic number for me. This is cool. I'm also gonna show you today an American fish tree attractor. You guys are gonna love this. I've put these suckers in. Uh, it has not been very long and they are attracting crazy amount of fish. So you're gonna love seeing that on live scope. Today we've got a beautiful day, bluebird day, roughly around 82 degrees. It's one of those crazy fall days. It's really warm. Very cold morning. Good for deer hunting. Good for deer hunting. I love deer hunting. Bow hunting is my thing. Outside of crappie fishing. There we go. Here we go. One more pot fish here, then we're gonna move on. All right. Another 
small one. So we know what kind of school this is. It's an elementary school <laughs> right now. Small fish. So let's move on and keep the uh, brush pile topic alive. So the weight that you use to get down to those piles is also uh, important. I'm currently using about a quarter ounce to get them down there, which is probably too much. I think that the speed in which they drop is based off of how uh, light the bite is, how stingy those fish are being. If you want it to go down really, really slow, you need a five, a seven, something really that takes that drop really slow. So when it goes down into that pile, they have an opportunity to react to it. Um, right now I'm dropping pretty quick just because I'm impatient. Uh, but we also have a decent bite right now, so. These fish right now in this fall time frame are feeding up for the winter. They're looking at eating, eating, eating. Um, it's a great time to experience crappie fishing, I'll tell you. You know, the spawn is sporadic. Where they spawn at, you know, it's it's different every year. Essentially, can, can it can be the same, of course, but um, you gotta love fall fishing because those fish are still around those, they're schooling up, but they're still around those piles, which give you targets to go to. If you find bait fish, you're going to find crappie, typically. Look for the structure around that bait fish that you find. These are better fish right here, it looks like anyway. You know, the beauty of live scope is you can see other things that are going on around. It's like I said before, you don't have to start up start up the big motor and, and grab your side imaging anymore. You can swing this sucker around. And I do have my uh, live scope mounted on the trolling motor shaft. So I prefer to do it that way. I can react quicker. I don't know if that's a good idea if you have a slower or an older trolling motor, but in Ultrax, the way that it reacts so quickly, I can really maneuver that and, and direct that live scope in the direction I need it to be quickly. There, that's a good fish. We want this to be a crappie. That's a big crappie. That's a big crappie right there. <laughs> You gotta love it. So all I'm doing is just, I'm targeting the bigger marks on this particular pile. And that's a solid 14 inch fish. Um, heavy, heavy, heavy. That's a heavy fish. Next thing I'd like to talk to you about is the length of pole that you're gonna use. Now, I think the go-to number is 10. I think that's the sweet spot. Most guys want a vertical jig on piles with 10s. But it doesn't have to be a 10. It could be a nine, an eight, a seven. It can be whatever you want it to be. Obviously, you wanna get away from the boat if possible. But if you are fishing deep, you don't necessarily have to get far away from the boat. So I prefer the Ozark rods, of course, Pro Series, the Jigging Rod, the Brush Buster. Um, but any, you know, they all do essentially the same thing. And I think 10 foot, that length is, um, is the sweet spot. Now, Wade, my fishing partner, he likes the 11 foot, even has a 12 footer. So a lot of guys like to even get out there even further. And with live scope, you know, you, you, as you can see these fish, you kind of like being able to dip really far out there because you have a 12 footer or 11 footer but those are a little heavy i think the 10 footer is just the sweet spot in my opinion you know for the most part i let the minnow do it, what it wants to do i don't jig it up and down but i have noticed lately that if you give it a little bump a minnow it will intrigue a bite sometimes so if i see that, that there's like two or three around it and they're not they're not committed yet i'll give it a little jump and that tends to do it. So, that's a small little school of fish, but there's a ton of them there. Just an enormous amount of fish there. Just a great day on the water, man, no matter what. This is a beautiful fall day. Trees are changing. So again, the nose is in the wind, always in the wind. I'm not using spot lock, I'm just tapping my foot pedal to keep me straight ahead. All the while steering my live scope. Well, it's 
Took a while on that pile, longer than I thought, but we got a little bitty eater. We'll take it. All right, folks, we're not done yet. We've still got some more slabs that are gonna go into this boat, but hey, use these tactics and you're gonna get a lot of practice at throwing fish in the live well. These are some great 101 type things that if you continue to fish and try them out, you're gonna get better and better with them. And before you know it, you're gonna have big, big slabs in the boat. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna talk to you about is hook size. Everybody talks about hook size. My go-to hook size on any lake in Southern Illinois is a four. Um, I do sometimes use a two. I don't think there's that big of a difference, but if I'm gonna be using small to medium minnows, I wanna use a smaller hook and a number four fits the bill perfectly. Now, a lot of people are gonna say a number two, a number two. Um, I use a number two as well. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, a great, it's great, but if I'm using really small minnows, I don't want a big hunkin' number two dragging my minnow down. So I uh, prefer to use a number four most of the time. Now, when I go to Grenada, it's a, uh, I believe it's a two-aught hook. It's, they're huge. I think a number two is the smallest hook that I use there. But regardless, they go bigger. They're bigger minnows, uh, bigger fish, all that great stuff. So I really do think the number four is the sweet spot, though. That's gonna be a good, <laughs> that's a ditty off that fish attractor. That's hilarious. That's a solid 12 and a half inch fish. Bro. That's awesome. Good day. Please subscribe. That's a good crappie. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. It's been a great day on the water. I appreciate it. Watch 101 brush pile fishing vertical. Just some of the things you need to know, especially when you're just getting started. Um, struggling to get this hook out. The other thing is, it's a nice eater. Doesn't look huge, I bet you, on the GoPro, but it's a solid eater. Nice little eater. Uh, thanks again. Please subscribe. Bam! We're going to have a great time this winter, folks.